Hi, I'm Marissa, producer for On That Note. Hi, and I'm Ashley, also the producer for On That Note. Here on On That Note, we have lighter topics and we have more heavier topics. And this is one of the more heavier topics. It has a strong use of language and it also uses the N-word. Viewer discretion is advised. Today, during our panel discussion, we described and used the distinction between the N-word, both the ER and the A usage, as well as which communities can and cannot use that word, the history of the word briefly, as well as the struggles that a lot of individuals have had. Perspective is really simple. It's like if you're black, you can use the word, and a lot of complexities come with that because you have a lot of people who, um, you know, self identify as black or as like Afro Latinx or Afro something else, and you have people who kind of like invalidate their blackness and tell them you're not really black, so they feel like some type of way about using or not using the word. Um, but I'm pretty straightforward in terms of like if your ancestry comes from, you know, like the slave trade and struggles like that, especially if you come from Caribbean islands that were inhabited mostly by slaves that were brought over and you and your family struggled through that, then you should have the right to say the word. So I feel like what I challenge all of you to do is if you're in a room full of your friends and you feel like there's something that's going on that you don't agree with, don't laugh it off. Come together, like cut the word out whatsoever because like the, the word nigga is associated with being real as well. Well, the fact of the matter is I have niggas who are white who are realer than most black guys I know. You know what I'm saying? So like, why can't they use the term nigga? And really understand where it came from, and why it is the way it is, and understand the history, and understand that, yeah, we took that word back, that's our word. And if we're gonna say that's our word, and understand that that means everybody who identify as the same as I do, that's their word too. Like, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say somebody's just gonna be like, oh, he's black. No, that doesn't really happen to me, but, but in the sense of saying, like, somebody's color isn't as dark as you, that's not really what it means. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can say that that's not true. Yeah, but you can and when I feel like what is up was an event, my person, well, I personally couldn't attend because I have fans. You don't really see support, <coughs> support of the fan tribe. Many fan people do identify with Afro Latina or Black as well, but that comment was, God forbid I woke into a house and say I don't have that dog. I was in total shock. I didn't know what to say. Luckily, the other girl had words to say something and said I feel offended. And then it turned into, I'm joking. It's a joke. Teach me how to bachata and that's not funny at all. And people just looked at it and didn't address it in a way I would just say, I don't know that black. I feel like it's kind of reverse as well. And that's how uncomfortable I felt with this video and that experience. Just as my friend got a disinvitation to the event this Sunday, if you say if you identify as black, you're black. She got literally called, I'm not allowed to come because I'm not black. Because she doesn't <laughs> present documentation that she's black. And I'm the only person saying something, but many of you feel the same way here. This panel discussion primarily its purpose was to open um, an outlet and a door for people to talk more about the word and just understanding the different contexts that the word can be used and hopefully people left here today wanting to talk to their friends more about it. Um, I think that we did a good job in some ways. I feel like a lot of people came into the environment very hostile already because of things that were occurring, because of how they feel about the word. So I feel like a lot of people didn't necessarily want to hear different perspectives, but they heard them anyways, and hopefully they're more, um, we prompted them to want to have more discussions with their friends. Thank you for watching. Since this was a heavier topic, we just wanted to treat it as such. Now we bring it back to Freddie in the studio where she gives you the facts on maturity. According to Darlin Magazine, we live in a culture that preys on people's mistakes. So does that mean we need to compensate being funny for being kind? Not exactly. We can still be funny and still be kind. Try not to poke fun at your friend's looks. If it bothers them, just stop. Or any of the insecurities for that matter. If you or a friend use self-deprecating humor, they can be sending you health messages. Studies show that self-deprecating humor can be linked to binge drinking. Humor is a communication strategy someone like this is more likely to have an internet or social media addiction. On YouTube, 21% of non-smoking ads had some kind of humor in them. 
people will respond more to a humorous message than a non-humorous one. Hence, why more PSAs try to have a lighter side, people also have different ways of handling um, serious matters. Some people use humor. Just try not to make others uncomfortable. And know there are some things you do not joke about. No one wants their feelings hurt. And coming up, we have Irene snooping around SUNY Plattsburgh. You don't want to miss this, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to On That Note. I am Freddie and hope you enjoy the amazing facts on maturity. Coming up, we have Irene interviewing students on the campus of SUNY Plattsburgh, followed by another episode of our amazing, amazing mini-series, Lessons Learned. Then, of course, our lovely panel. Now, before we give the air to Irene, I want to tell you a little story, or I guess you can say Freddie's take on myself and maturity. So, if most of you didn't know, I am a product of two beautiful African parents. Um, I was born in Ghana, which is in West Africa. In case you didn't know, go look at the map, like, right now. You need to figure it out. But um, back home, our culture is extremely, extremely strict. Everything you do, there's always like a Hawkeye. Everybody's just like watching. You have to do the right thing. You have to get good grades. You know, you have to act like a lady. Don't act like a man. It's sad to say that, but that's just how the culture is. Um, and I learned to mature at a very, very early age. I'd probably say at the age of six, I started cooking on my own. I started um, watching my, little, my younger brother when my parents would go to work. Fast forward, we migrated to America, and here I am. I came here in 2003. And, you know, when, when I hit 13, actually, that was when I, I got my first one, by the way, just so everybody knows, 13, it was like, everyone was like popping back then. But um, I was, again, in charge of my brothers, and then my parents had two more kids, two little sisters, and I would constantly always take them to school, bring them back, feed them. I know, it's like a very, very young age, but at that time, to me, like 13 in my country is like 20. So I was popping, I was grown. But not only that, like my mentality up here was really like up there. Like I was an avid reader, so I was always constantly searching for something bigger, something greater. And I was very respectful of my elders as well. And I think I've grown up pretty well. I am a beautiful woman, and I've grown to be a very kind and loving woman. And thanks, Mom and Dad. I love you. <laughs> now we take it over to Irene. Hi everyone, I'm Irene Hossein with On That Note and today I am here at the ACC talking about maturity. Have you ever made a joke that went too far? Yes, and I think that everyone kind of has at one point in their life. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't say it, I couldn't give an example specifically, um, but I'm almost certain that I have, um, yeah. I probably have, but I, it's probably going to been, it's probably been a while since I've ever done that. I think as a society, we become offended easily. As a society, I'm not sure, but as different individuals, yes, upon certain topics, we definitely get offended. Yes, as a society. Um, we do get easily offended by things. However, there are certain individuals who just learn to um, take a joke and, you know, like they can just laugh it off. Like I know going into comedy shows, um, a lot of comedians speak about um, a lot of offensive things that could offend other people. But I feel like everyone needs to learn like just to have fun and not take things so seriously because everyone needs to laugh here and there once in a while laugh at themselves laugh at other people it's okay it's part of life i would say that our society has become more easily to offend um but i think that's mostly because we're more aware of topics and that we're more sensitive to those topics um, i think that the fact that we actually care about these issues now um, and that people are more willing to speak about those issues when they affect them, I think has made it a society more, more easily offended. Thanks, Irene. Up next, we will show you what is going on with Gabby and Destiny's World in Lessons Learned. We'll be right back, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back. So this is our special episode of Lessons Learned. It is our season finale, and I cannot tell you just how excited I am not that I'm not going to miss you guys, 
but <laughs> last time Sierra made a new friend named Elizabeth at beauty school, mm -hmm. who just so happens to be Liam's ex-girlfriend. Now I know that's some tea because, you know, I'm starting to think like, woohoo, there's some juicy secrets. I'm ready. Well, will Gabby and Elizabeth get along? I hope not because I wouldn't. Will it be too awkward for Liam? I don't know. <clears throat> Here is our season finale of Lessons Learned. I hope you enjoy. You're not mad, are you? No, I'm not. I mean, it's in the past, right? Yeah, it is. And you know I love you, right? Yes. All right, I'm gonna head to the bathroom now. Okay. You have to tell me everything about her. Whoa, 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 whoa. Gabby, chill. I've never seen you like this before. What does she look like? Is she prettier than me? Uh, oh, oh my gosh, don't look. What? Oh, don't look, she's coming. Oh, oh my gosh, Yara, is that you? How have you been? I'm great. <laughs> oh, who's your friend? Oh, this is Gabby, the one I was telling you about. I'm a model. Oh. Hey, Elizabeth. Oh, um, what's my ex doing here? Oh, it shouldn't be a problem, right? Good, because I'm better. Like, look at you. You look like you haven't eaten in days. Excuse me? <laughs> Elizabeth, you're so funny. <laughs> I didn't think that was funny. I was kidding. You're so sensitive. Why don't you take a joke? It really wasn't funny, Elizabeth. Whatever. I'm over this. Sierra, you coming? Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess so. I don't want to talk about it. Hey, uh, I'm here to take a shower. Get out of my house! I'm gonna call the cops! Hey, uh, easy there. Yeah. I'm just here to take a shower. It's uh, down the hall to the left. Thank you, thank you. Did I just miss something? Yeah, that's Jaguar who comes here sometimes. Usually when you're not around. Whatever. I have more important things to worry about anyway. Like what? <laughs> What's the matter? Guess who I had the pleasure of meeting today? Liam's ex-girlfriend, Elizabeth. That's awkward. How's that? She's Sierra's new friend at, at beauty school, and she was very rude to me. Have you tried speaking to Sierra at all? No, and when I tried to, she ran off with Elizabeth, and I just... Wait, wait, how, how did Liam feel about all this? Don't even get me started on Liam. He just like walked away. It was so awkward for him. Oh. Hey, Destiny. Hey, Gabby. Listen, I, 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 know, I know what happened and I'm, I'm really, really sorry. I won't let Elizabeth go near you, like ever. All right, well, if you say so. Well, what I, what, what, all, all those events I found to be not funny, so I told her off. I don't want her bothering a friend. Okay, good. Yay. Because you're my best friend. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Watch it to me. Hope you enjoyed our season finale of Lessons Learned. That was a lot. That was super awkward for Gabby and Liam. Who does Elizabeth think she is, might I add? Honestly, okay, so personally, if I was Gabby, I would seriously sit her down with Elizabeth and be like, listen, I'm sorry. Like, I don't really know you that much or that well, I guess I should say. And we're not really friends because you, you're being really fake right now. But the man chose me and not you. So I'm going to need you to back up a little bit. And let me enjoy my relationship, thank you very much. But if you overstep your boundaries again, I think this face tells you exactly what's going to happen next. I don't need to discuss that with you. But I am glad Sierra chose Gabby over Elizabeth. I do think the real question is, 
Why did Destiny let a homeless man use your shower? Thank you for watching. Coming up next, we have our panel. You do not want to miss this. Welcome back, note takers. It's time for a special panel with our lovely guest here. We have Will, Justin, and Emily here today to talk about their maturity. Okay, so because this is like a season finale, I'm like super pumped, so let's just get right into it, okay? So my first question for you is, when do you feel like someone really becomes mature? I feel like it varies per person. Mm -hmm. Like certain people are going to reach their maturity at a certain age, but I definitely feel like around college years is when you start to reach that level of maturity, especially like with other people. Okay. I sort of agree with Will. Everyone reaches it at a different time. I agree with him also in the sense that it happens typically when someone is of age and goes away for, for college, you know, exposes themselves to a different reality and different perspectives and people. Um, of course, everyone has a different mental capacity, so you, you can't really uh, judge one person's maturity up against another's, but I feel like as long as someone's understanding of differences, I think you could consider them mature. Um, I'd have to agree with both Justin and Will. It definitely takes time to feel maturity out, I guess. And I feel like you have to really go through something that changes your perspective on life. Uh, um, college is usually a time that that happens where you're, you know, going to a completely different environment uh, from what you're used to in high school. And you're meeting a lot of people from different backgrounds and ethnicities. And I feel like you really learn from them and then you can apply their life experiences to your own. And that's when I feel like you can become more mature. So my second question is, how can you define someone who is mature? Like, what is your personal definition of, you know, someone who is mature? I definitely think when coming to college, it's such a culture shock mm -hmm. that maturity starts to come upon you. And then I've seen people, you know, who are freshmen who are very mature. And then I've seen people who are seniors who are mature. And I've Amen. seen seniors who are immature. <laughs> but I think in a sense, like, it's someone who can take the experiences that happen to them and deal with them in a positive way. Can I get a high five? Yes. <laughs> like, even if it's negative, you're going to take that experience and say, I lived through it. Mm -hmm. And I got through it. Like finals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I definitely agree with Will. I think it takes a lot to take a negative and turn it into a positive, even if it is just a learning experience. Um, something I, I would like to add on that is uh, I think it takes a very mature person to also be able to accept someone with a different opinion, even if they don't necessarily agree with it. I think a very common misconception today is that we don't have to listen to someone who has a different idea than us. I think oftentimes we're quick to throw labels onto someone who thinks something differently. I think being able to accept that without having to uh, attack them or place labels on someone is what makes someone mature. Uh, Justin and Will, you guys have really good answers, which makes this really hard. Um, I think you can really see maturity when you, I guess, you can take your own opinions and biases out of any, if you're, you know, handling a situation between two people, and um, if you can just, you know, again, take your own biases out and, you know, I guess, have your own opinions out, then I guess that shows maturity. <laughs> That's all good responses. I agree. <laughs> um, my third question, what are some ways to deal with people who have not reached their mature state? I think the best way to deal with it is just kind of, you know, let them kind of control the situation. It may be really hard and you might want to say something to them, be like, mm, mm. but, uh, you know, as long as you just, you know, you can maybe hear what they're saying and maybe try to help them learn and, you know, hopefully you can be a good mentor to them. I agree. Um, well, my answer to this is, might sound pretty uh, contradictory to my last question, but I don't really <laughs> deal with immature people. Um, I, I try, but it's like speaking to a brick wall. I mean, if someone's not trying to understand you or under put themselves in your shoes, then you can't really talk to them. So what I do personally is I, I can be very condescending, maybe t even to a point of disrespect. Um, 
maybe that's not very mature of me, but I guess I have a tendency to fight fire with fire. I agree. Well, and we're still maturing as well, so it's not like we have to have the best way. I've learned that taking the experience from their point of view has been the best way for me because they're going to react and have their point of view, especially if they're immature. They have their view, and that's the view of the world. So finding out like why they think that way a lot of the times will help you. Not everyone has the same motivations as me, and that's something I've realized in becoming more mature is like, not everyone wants to do what I want to do with life and has their life planned out. So you have to go at it from where they'll feel comfortable in that conversation. Gotcha, and I agree with you. I think the point that most of us are trying to touch on right now is sometimes, you know, a reaction is not really needed from you. You know what I mean? Like, just it, take that time out to educate somebody, and that's all you can do in this, you know, day and age that we're in right now. Like, there's nothing you can really, you can't force somebody, you can't beat somebody's child. <laughs> so the only thing you can do is just educate them. I appreciate all your answers. Well, that's all the time we have for you for On That Note tonight. Tune in next time. As always, I'm your host, Freddie. Thanks for watching the spring season of PSTV. Farewell, note takers. Bye.